everybody. This is Heidi St. John. Thanks for tuning in today. You guys have found me at my little corner of the internet. I'm so glad you're here. Last weekend, uh, last Friday, we had Dr. Kathy Cook on the show talking about resilience and how important it is that parents learn to pass this character quality onto their children. We can't pass on what we don't possess. Dr. Kathy's back on the show with me today, and we're going to talk about five core things that our kids need in order to build resiliency. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right, you guys, welcome to Off the Bench. I'm so glad that you've joined me. I want to say thank you to those of you who are brand new listeners to the show. We're starting to hear from you. If you've never left a review for the show over at iTunes and you've never passed it along on your social media, that is one way that you can really bless us by sharing the show. We like to have guests on here. They're going to encourage you. They're going to challenge you, uh, not necessarily by, by just virtue of the fact they're going to make you feel good, but they're going to make you think about uh, the impact that your life is having, particularly as it relates to the children that are being brought up in this culture right now. Dr. Kathy Cook is back on the show with me today. She is the founder of Celebrate Kids and as a wonderful author and a, and a very sought after speaker across the country. I've been privileged to speak several times with her and share the stage on occasion. And I'm just thrilled she's here. Kathy has a brand new book out on resiliency that I was honored to endorse. And this is a great topic for today. My friend, Dr. Dr. Kathy, welcome back to the show. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, Heidi, for trusting me. Well, you're welcome. I, I want to just jump right into this because you and I were talking on Friday about the culture that our kids are being raised in right now. Mm -hmm. Very, very different than the one that you and I grew up in, very different than even just a few years ago. Right now we're navigating pandemics, we're navigating a school system that has absolutely shifted. The public school system is on its head right now. So a lot of kids uh, struggling to find their footing. And uh, now we're recognizing that in children, this is particularly true as I've been traveling around Congressional District 3 for the last 18 months, I'm hearing stories from parents saying that their kids are struggling with depression, they're struggling with a sense of identity. And we as parents have a primary responsibility that was given to us by mm. the Lord who said, parents, train up your children in the way that they should go. We are the ones that put these building blocks in place so that they can uh, enter into adulthood successfully. In your book, you gave five core things that children need to build resiliency. So I'd love to just jump off there today so that we can teach parents how to have healthy conversations with their kids, starting with these five core things. Yeah, I appreciate that. So security, who can I trust? If your kids don't think they can trust themselves to do anything right, they'll never try something new. Mm -hmm. And if they don't think they can trust you to hear their heart cry, Without judgment, without shame, without a lot of blame, they may not come to you. Daddy, my heart hurts. Mm -hmm. Mom, I was teased and I don't know how to handle it. Mom, I'm scared of the soccer coach. He's mean. If they don't think they can trust us to handle what's going on in us, then we're not going to go to them and we'll either isolate with our own fear. Hello, depression rules in that world, right? Yep. And then security leads to identity. Who am I? And I want our children to define themselves as overcomers and as victors and as um, learners. You know, I'm not stupid. This is just something I don't know much about yet. You know, school is all about learning what I don't yet know. I am not dumb. This is just new. I mean, these are identity statements. You can see the smile on my face that change children to understand this. And, and, I'm, and I'm Arlene Cook's daughter and I'm Don Cook's daughter and I want to be a part of the family. Do they want to be known as yours? That identity piece is huge because you need to be the one as the mom and the dad, the grandparent who's speaking life into their hurting places and whatever's going on. Mm, I love that you said that. Well, I love that you said that. Do I want to be known as yours? I've never yeah. heard it phrased that way. Huh. But as a mother, I can tell you, you know, I, I love it when my kids are proud of me. I love yeah. it when they when they say, that's my mom, and they want to be identified with me. And yeah. uh, and I think we have the opportunity as parents when we shepherd our kids, say, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you that that God chose me to be your mom, that I get yes. to be the privilege of um, calling you my son or my daughter. It really is a precious, precious gift that um, will it reaps a benefit for a lifetime. 
oh, it's so cool. And that leads to belonging. So if I, identity is, that's my mom, and she has told me she's glad I'm her daughter, then belonging, again, is secure. Who wants me? Mom and dad want me. Grandma and grandpa want me. My teacher wants me. My neighbor even seems to like that I'm her neighbor. The stronger our belonging, the greater the likelihood that we're going to have reason to stand up and walk out of our valley experiences. And we'll have a lot of support system because it does take a support system, the right support system, right, to make sure that your kids know who you want them to belong to. Because if you know your identity, you know who to hang out with. Mm, right? Yeah. And if you know your identity, then you hang out with people who are like you, not exclusively and not arrogantly and not pridefully, but we know that our values maintain when we hang out with people who are more commonly like us, then our identity is secure. So is our belonging. Then we get to purpose. Why am I alive? Well, not to be perfect. See, if kids are going to be resilient, they're going to have to understand perfection on this side of heaven doesn't happen. So, you know, what's my purpose? To grow and to learn and to become. And my purpose is to grow up. And that means that I'm going to have to stand up. Like when I learned how to walk, I didn't stay down. And now I'm going to have to stand up also. And I'm going to have to try the piano piece again. I'm going to have to try soccer again. I'm going to have to try memorizing a Bible verse again because daddy said it'll be good for me. And then competence, what do I do well? Well, you know what, Heidi, if my security is in my mom and my identity is in my family and my belonging is in my family and my purpose is to grow up, then my competence is I, I'm a learner mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm competent that I, I trust I can learn and I trust that my mom and dad and others will be there for me to help me learn. If you isolate, resiliency isn't possible and you'll die. And that's the, you know, I don't know. Heidi, the depression and the anxiety and the isolation, and it started before the COVID crisis. Yep, yep, a lot of yep. young people isolate because they think they're the center of their own world and they don't need anybody. Mm-hmm. They isolate because they think that they're their own authority because they have Siri in their pocket and they think Siri is good enough. I love to tell them that Siri is a liberally programmed computer that doesn't know or love them or their God. Right. <laughs> And then they look at me like, whoa, say that again? <laughs> but <laughs> we need to be their support system. And when we are, then all five of those needs are met in a, in a healthy rhythm and a way. Because ultimately, Heidi, we want them to come to us. Mommy, help me. Mm-hmm. The highest compliment a kid will pay you is to come to you and admit their fear and that they need help. Mm, it's so good. And I think, you know, parents, we've been told for so long and parents have bought this lie and we're, I'm watching it uh, in my travels as a, as a speaker and looking at the, a younger generation of parents that are coming up. We really have pushed this responsibility off to educators. We've pushed it off to youth pastors. Mm-hmm. We've, yeah. we've had other, we've sort of outsourced yeah. What God says the primary role is for parents to uh, to really impart these kinds of ideas to their children. And we're the ones who are setting the tone. I was thinking, you know, you brought up, uh, you know, is it uh, Winnie the Pooh or whatever, Tigger, you know, and I was thinking about Eeyore. Right. Yeah. And sort of and sort of I have a little bit of I'm going to be honest, I, I can be sort of a glass half empty person. Right. If, if, if I'm if I've been in a season too long for a struggle or I haven't been in my Bible or. You know, I'm listening to the wrong voices, sure. right? Not the voices that encourage. And I know this is the same thing, same thing of my children. I can easily kind of become an Eeyore, you know, just like, wah, wah, you know, and, and there are a lot of parents listening to this right now who see that tendency in their children, but we can't pass on what we don't possess. And it starts with us. And I wonder what it would look like if we started raising not a generation of children who saw themselves as victims, but kids who uh, had the ability to see their that failure or that mistake as an opportunity to learn and grow and to become an optimist, right? Yes. Instead of a pessimist. So how important uh, mm. how important is optimism? Heidi, it's so important, way more important than I thought when I started writing my book. Um, you know, it's it's hope. It's yep. um, it's the belief in myself and in others that I, I will overcome. It is, um, it's what allows us to take responsibility for our stuff. And if we're optimistic, we can take responsibility for our stuff and not be defeated by the weight of that. And then we become responsible to be the overcomer Mm. and the victor immediately. We celebrate ourselves when we have an optimistic spirit. Doesn't mean that we isolate from a mom and a dad that will help us, but it means that I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not going to isolate and try things. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not going to give in to the pain. I'm. I'm going to rise above it. Um, we don't blame shift. We have a healthier self talk. Heidi, um, self talk. Oh my goodness, it'll rule, right? 
Um, right. You know, I'm so stupid. I can't do it. Oh, this is going to be so hard. An optimist will say, well, this is so hard. It's still hard, but it's not going to be hard tomorrow. Yeah. Or an optimist will say, I can't read well yet. I can't read well yet, but there's a day coming. Yeah. You know, Billy yeah. doesn't pay any attention to me yet. Yeah. That's an optimist. An optimist is looking to be victorious in the situation. So it is very essential. Um, we're problem solvers when we're optimistic. We don't stay down. We assume that on our own, when we're able or with the people around us that we can overcome. Very, very, very important. So good. So good. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Kathy, before the break, we were talking about optimism and and you pointed out, you know, in the writing of the book, in the research, you discovered probably even more important than you realized going into it. But a lot of parents listening to this right now have kids that are pessimists or maybe they are. Maybe they're the chief pessimist in their house. How uh, how important is it for parents to be aware of our kids pessimism and yeah. some ways that that pessimism actually stands in the way of resiliency? Yeah, no, that's really good. Pessimism absolutely does stand in the way. It it will prevent us from taking a risk. And all learning is a risk. All growth mm. requires risk. And so if I'm a if I'm a naysayer, if I'm only aware of what I cannot do, if I'm only aware of where I have failed, I will suspect that I will fail again. So one of the best ways that we become more optimistic as parents and that we help our kids is to look for what's right before we look yeah. for what's wrong. Pessimists develop a what's wrong kind of mentality. I mean, it's not prideful to know your strengths. If you don't know your strengths, you can't use them to improve. Now, it's prideful if you think you only have strengths and not weaknesses. And it's prideful if you think that you have more strengths than somebody else. But it's, it's essential that our kids know what they do well and what they can do better. And I would say, too, that specific compliments, and Heidi, I've talked with you about this before, specific compliments raise the bar. You know, rather mm. than saying to a kid, oh, that was really good. We say, that was a creative ending. I laughed out loud. You're becoming a creative writer. Rather than saying to a pianist, oh, that was really good. When we're listening in the living room to our little kids playing the piano, we say, you know, Jeremiah, you're, I could tell that the rhythm was much more appropriate to what the music on the page, like that way to get the rhythm right with your right hand. I'm proud of you. Proud of you for wanting to learn. And I'm going to say, too, that one of the most important compliments to pay to an adult and a child is to call them resilient. You know, when your daughter tries the spelling words again without putting up a fit, when your child goes up and apologizes to a soccer coach for a bad attitude and chooses to try better, you say, well, you're resilient. Well, what's that mean, dad? You're willing to try again and put things right and stand up and walk out of the difficulties. You don't do a U-turn at the beginning of the valley. Mm. You know, you're willing to experience the heartache because you know that it's in the hard things that you grow up. Mm. And I'm so proud of you for becoming resilient. It's one of the most important character qualities because it almost guarantees the use of all the others. I have been, uh, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking about the people in my life. You know, you and I have talked about this before, but my grandparents who probably had the most profound impact on me, knowing where I came from and the uh, the importance it was going to be, how important it was going to be for me to be able to be resilient and to see myself as God sees me. One of the things that we've lost, I think, in the culture right now is the importance of mentoring and the importance of mentorship. And you write about this in the book, about the benefit of children having older mentors. So how should parents respond if their child seems then to value another person's opinion over their own? Because you know what? That can smart sometimes, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't envy the parent when that happens. I'm sure it's awkward. Yet we, we need to realize that many of our uh, preteens and teens will be looking for other adults, not instead of parents, but to find out if they, if they also agree with their parents. Like, is my parent the only adult who says that this is wise? Or does my Sunday school teacher, my youth group leader, my piano teacher, my soccer coach, again, um, does my neighbor, I'm going to go weed the garden with my neighbor because I think he's really cool. And I'm going to ask him a couple of questions about how he thinks life works. And so it, it, to look at it as good, um, you know, if they get a false opinion, opinion, not truth, they get a false opinion from that neighbor when they're weeding the garden, this is why you need to be available. So they come mm -hmm. home, you come home. Hey, how did it go with Mr. Jake? What did you guys talk about today? Hey, mm -hmm. mom, he thinks that. And then you have that conversation. But and one of the reasons that I think in, the, in, the, in light of resiliency that other adult role models are valuable is that we have not experienced all the heartache that our kids may. 
Um, I was not bullied as a kid. I mean, I was a little bit. I was so tall. And I, I, there were times when it was awkward and I was made fun of. And so praise God again for my parents. It's certainly not as difficult as it is today. But um, for us to have other role models available to our kids – who can talk to them about the things that we can't talk to them about because we haven't experienced them. Well, and you're still, you know, as a, as a parent, you are the primary influence, right? At least it's, it certainly Absolutely. starts out that way. So we're giving our kids, like I have laughed over the years so many times that I'll say something to one of my kids, right? And they just kind of, you know, they either roll their eyes at me or they're whatever. And then they'll hear it from someone else that they respect, whether it's a pastor or, you know, a radio host or Ben Shapiro or somebody. Yeah, and they'll come yeah, to yeah. me and say, hey, mom, Ben Shapiro said this. And I'm like, I, I, I've been saying that for 15 years. Like, but OK, but OK, you know, but I think you see it. Parents see it as a win because what's, what, what you really want is for these people to come along and reinforce what you've been saying. Your kids need other voices. They need to be able to hear other voices. And what we want to do is teach them discernment so that they're listening to good and godly voices. Amen and amen. Don't be afraid of them seeking insight. This is why we discern with security who can you trust. Yes. Can you recognize manipulation? Can you recognize bias? Can you recognize who is for you and who is against you? We have got to teach our kids how to recognize those things because they on their own should be able to step away from negativity and bias as well as other things. Yeah, I, I think it's valuable. I appreciate your support of that idea. You, uh, I, we've got a few minutes left, and I, I want to uh, touch on something at the end of today's show that you wrote about in the book, which I thought was really important. You touched on spiritual resilience yeah. and how you believe this might be the most important resilience of all. Why did you pick this topic, and, uh, and why do you think it's so important that parents pass this on to their children? Yeah, oh, I could talk forever, Heidi. Thanks for bringing it up. Um, I'm really concerned about the dropout rate from faith mm -hmm. and the dropout rate from church, or from adults and young adults and teenagers who give up on God. That's a much more significant giving up mm -hmm. than giving up on spelling words or you know whatever else might be going on. I think we have a generation of young people who are treating God like Amazon Prime. Absolutely. And so they, they don't know the God of the Bible well enough to know what is appropriate to expect of him. And if their expectations do not line up with the truth of the scripture, they will be disappointed when they shouldn't have been. And we've got to do a better job at home and in the church of teaching them the whole of God so that, like, I, I came to faith in Christ for wisdom. But what if I never knew that he was also mercy and grace mm. and love and hope and passion and compassion? Then if he would have let me down in the wisdom category because I didn't get the answer I wanted, then I would have given up. But now, because I know he's all these other things, I can go and I can go, well, maybe it was his mercy that caused him to answer the question the way that he did. Maybe that was love. And that's why I, I got the insight that I got. We must do a better job of that. And if I have time for one more thing, Heidi, yeah. we have a tendency, I think, as parents and adults. Now, when I read the Word of God, and I love what you do with Mom Strong, and your word studies are just brilliant times too. Many of us will read the scripture and we'll have an aha. The Lord will speak to us, we'll open the Bible, and there's the verse we need, or we might sing, and there's the song we needed to hear ourselves sing, and the worship experience was just, we were enveloped by the, by the Lord. But there are times when that doesn't happen. Mm. There are times when I read the Word, and it doesn't bounce off the page at me. There are times when I worship with, with music, and it doesn't necessarily drive me to my knees or into this relationship yeah. frenzy. we got to let our kids know that. Because if, we, if our kids think that every time we encounter the God, the God of the Bible, it's this wow time, then when they have a plateau in their relationship, like we do with all relationships, they might think that God is distant, God mm -hmm. doesn't know or love them, or they've done something so wrong that they cannot hear from God anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean about resiliency. Talk with your kids about the reality of your relationship. It's not a religion, and relationships have ebb and flow to them. God doesn't change. Yeah. God does not change, praise God. Yeah. But we do, and our circumstances cause that. Yep, and I think it... it harkens back to this prosperity gospel and this emotional emotional driven you know relationship with God it's it's what God you know can do for me it's not who right. God is and how does God see me and how how do I function in God's economy and I think it's so important for parents to be honest I was talking about the 365 day devotional that I just finished that's coming out from Tyndale in a few months and at the very beginning of it you know I I just admitted I thought I 
I'll I'll be in the when they asked me to write this 365 day devotion, I thought, awesome, I'm going to be in the word of God every day and God's going to talk to me and I'll have something to say. Oh, no, there were weeks when I would I'm <laughs> reading and I'm like, I got nothing. You know, <laughs> I got nothing. And I would try to write and I had nothing to say. <laughs> and I, I had, I just conf- confessed it out loud. I was like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in a dry bone season right now. And we yeah. come in and out. You're absolutely right. Those our relationship with God is just that it's a relationship mm-hmm. and relationships ebb and they flow. What we want to know that in right in the, in the deepest part of our knower is that God loves us. Yes. That he loves us and he's never going to leave us and never going to forsake us. You know, my grandmother used to say to me, how do you either believe God's word or you don't? Yeah. And that's what's going to take you through those 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 hills and those valleys. Kathy, in the last 30 seconds that we have, tell listeners a little bit about Celebrate Kids and how you are equipping parents and children to become more resilient. Thank you so much. Well, I'm a conference speaker like you are. I'm hired by schools, churches, and events. Um, we also do our own events at Celebrate Kids and Ignite the Family, which is our multi-generational biblical worldview family um, ministry. Um, we have uh, our own podcast. We've got social media, books, all that, celebratekids.com. I just, uh, like you, just love people. Just love the family unit. Want to speak life into it. Honored to be here, my friend. Thank you. You know, one of the reasons I love you so much is that your love for people is evident. And it's evident when you speak. It's evident uh, in your books. And I hope that people run out and buy this book. It's an important topic right now. I think probably more more important now than it has been in previous Mm -hmm. years because of what Mm -hmm. we're facing in the culture right now. And we want our kids to be able to thrive no matter what the circumstances are. So, Dr. Kathy Cook, it's always a joy to have you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Heidi. For more information on Dr. Kathy Cook and her ministry, which is Celebrate Kids, you can go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash podcast, scroll down to the show notes, and I will link back to all things related to Dr. Kathy Cook. I hope you guys will go out and purchase this book. It's an important book. There's a reason that I felt like it was worthy of my endorsement and my time to share it with you. Our kids need to know that they are who God says they are. And mom and dad, you can't pass on what you don't possess. So be in the word today. Love your families well. And I will see you back here tomorrow at the intersection of faith and culture.